was like the flame. And there's uh, kind of two buttons, it's an easy way to do it. And if you could focus in on here, right in on there, I'm gonna press this button and hold it down. Okay, I had to hold it down, and now it's lit. I don't wanna lift this up. If I do, it'll shut the machine down anyway. But this has to warm up. It takes about five minutes, 10 minutes to warm up and to come to equilibrium. So we're gonna wait for that to happen. Uh, and then we'll go to the next part where we do the calibration and read the sample. So what we've got to do now is we've got to, we've got to kind of characterize and make sure that the the um, <clears throat> kind of the uptake of the of the water uh, or, or your sample is within a certain range because that's where the efficiency of making very small droplets and getting atomization is good. So I filled a 10 mil graduated cylinder and you should have somebody time it. We're going to run it for 30 seconds. Set. Okay. Go. Okay. So this went from 10 down to 6.8. So there's 3.2, 30 seconds. So it's 6.4 mils per minute. And that's, it should be between 6 and 7 mils per minute. So that's a check. Okay, so we've done that. Uh, by the way, notice, <clears throat> come over here and listen a little bit. When the sample is drawing correctly, you have kind of a, a soft sound. And when it's sucking air, it sounds different. Okay? So, kind of listen for that, because if there's no difference when you put the, uh, this tube in the, or taking it out, that means it's plugged and you won't get any signal. So kind of listen for that. Now what we have to do is we have to uh, optimize the flame. And so we go back to the optimize. Okay. <coughs> and in this case, we're going to say optimize the signal before we optimize the lamps. Now we're, we're, we're taking in Actually, the flame is on, the instrument is reading, we're taking PI water, and you notice that um, we're going to instrument zero. So, because that's DI water, this is an instrument zero. So, I'm going to click instrument zero, and you should see these, these sort of go down to zero. So, that's what that did. Um, next, what we're going to do is we're going to take a sample. And let's take a sample, usually the highest one. This is a 5 ppm sample. And we're going to aspirate it, which means put it right in there. And we're getting a signal, okay? So the signal here is 0.178. Now, this has been set up for you. But if I can show you on the instrument here, different uh, atoms atomize from the solution, like in this case, lead 2 plus to lead atoms, different parts of the flame. So you can raise and lower the flame to optimize it. And uh, but we're not gonna do that because that's been optimized for you. But if you're doing other work, that's what, that's what we're doing this for. Let's check the results. We have about point, bouncing around, but it's about 0.18 uh, is the absorption and this sensitivity check, 5 ppm, or milligrams per liter, gives about 0.2 absorption. And we're kind of in the ballpark, so that's, that's pretty good. So, since that's done, uh, we note the gain at 64%, and we say, okay, and cancel. I'm gonna take this out. In between every sample, you should put, yeah, capillary into DI water to, to rinse it. So to start, we're going to run this particular sheet. What will happen is it, it will, let me change this here. I'm going to change the scale. It's going to go from 0 to 1. And we're going from 0 to uh, we have, uh, 5 ppm. Yep. Okay. Okay, so let's change the scale, um, and <coughs> this is the calibration we're going to do. 
So when I say start, it's going to tell me to do certain things. Now, when you're working in the lab, you'll be working with a student. One student will be changing the bottles that you'll be using. Another one will be getting them ready. So you'll have a lot of different solutions. Here, I've transferred them from a volumetric flask into these plastic bottles. If you have, because I've made these a while ago, if you uh, are analyzing for metals, you can't store them in glass vessels because the metal absorbs onto the glass. Eventually, you'll end up with a false reading, so we store them this way. This is AA water, so this is just uh, water, 2% nitric acid, and that's going to be our, our blank, if you will. So let's begin. Start, you press the start button, um, and it says prepare for instrument zero. So the, the instrument, you say OK, and there's a delay. I'm going to get ready. So it doesn't tell you, it's a little tricky. Okay, 18 instrument zero. Okay, and now it's going to read the Cal zero, which is the A word. And you can see, you can't really see it too well, it's just going along the bottom like that. So it's doing it three times. Okay. Now it says for standard one. So I take this out and put it in DI water. And then it says standard one is essentially we said was 0.2. So you take it, put it in 0.2. And then you say read. We put a delay of six seconds in, so it's counting down, and then it should start taking the, the, uh, the information. Okay. Okay, you heard three binks. Its concentration is 0.2. That's the mean absorption, relative standard deviation, all that good stuff. Now it says present, present sample two, or calibration two, into the DI water. And number two, if you forget, it's right here, is the 0.5. Because that's how we set it up. All right. Now we say read. Starting to draw the calibration curve here. Okay, three clicks. You get a message. Okay. So you see, taking the data is actually a lot faster than preparing the solutions. And we've got a beautiful calibration curve here, as you can see. Now we run the reagent blank. And that's the A water. So you really just follow the directions. Okay. Present solution. So here's my solution. Uh, it's in a 20 mil uh, vial. So you know, fill it up to about 18. Make sure it's filtered. Um, first things first, I have to put this in the DI water. Always put it in the DI water in between. This. Okay. It gives the concentration in parts per million, 0.995. Uh, so that's, that's what your result would be. And you continue with the other samples the same way, and the instrument is uh, essentially um, set up to uh, turn off the flame when you've taken all of the samples. There's one exercise you'll do as a class, and that is to determine the detection limit. There you'll have a sample that's quite dilute, and the 
AA Warrior, which is the blank, and you'll be alternating back and forth. And so you'll be recording that data. There'll be a template set up so you can use that. Now that you've uh, gotten uh, all, of your, all of your data, by the way, let's just take a look at this, uh, this particular calibration chart. That graph that you made, you notice it's, it's, really quite, it's really quite good over the scale. So that's going to give us some excellent results. So uh, let's say remember to save your data. So go to File, uh, go to File, uh, Save As, and you'll give it a name under the folder to save your data. Now when you shut down, there are shut down instructions, but basically you have to shut down the program, shut off the instrument, make sure that these tanks, the top valves, you never touch this valve. You never touch this valve. It's only the big valve directly on the tank. Turn to the right to turn it off. Record the uh, pressure. Record the pressure. And you record the pressure here. And that's it. Turn off that. And you're done.